if you want to ask something. So with that, uh, Julia, welcome. Uh, great to have you and take it away. Yes, yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks, Andre, for, for the invitation. Thanks for being there. I'm happy to present this work on small campaign donors. You will see small campaign donors in the US, so very related uh, to tomorrow's uh, election. Uh, this is joint work with uh, Laurent Bouton at G G Georgetown University, Vincent Pons from uh, Harvard Business School, and uh, Edgar DeWitt uh, with a great uh, PhD student uh, from Sciences Po Paris, who is actually on the, on the job market uh, this, uh, this year. Uh, so, uh, if you look at uh, what happened in recent years uh, in U.S. politics, uh, there were a lot of uh, a lot of talks uh, about small donors. Uh, small donors are perceived as increasingly important. Uh, there were an article in the Guardian, for example, on March uh, 2019, saying that not the billionaires, uh, why small donors are Democrats' new powerhouse. Uh, some even talk uh, about a revolution. Uh, saying that, okay, perhaps campaign reforms may never pass. Uh, perhaps we will have to live uh, for the next, uh, I don't know, decades in the US uh, with citizens united. But as long as we have this small money in politics, uh, a number of uh, things might uh, change, and in particular, the weight of big donors. I was uh, particularly uh, 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 struck by uh, an article published uh, in, the, in the New York Times uh, just four days ago, so it was really about the, 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 the midterms and the tomorrow elections. Uh, the, the title of the article was Fueled by Billionaires, Political Spending Shatters Record Again. But if you read uh, the, the, the subtitle, and in particular, if you read the article itself, it's really about the race between billionaires and small donors. And in a sense, uh, to see whether or not the rise of small donors can be a way uh, to counteract uh, the power of mega donors, and in particular, Republicans, billionaires uh, in American politics. So I think we all agree on this uh, growing role of small donors. But the thing is that even if we do realize that small donors are increasingly important, uh, we do not have a lot of information about them. We do not have a lot of information uh, neither uh, about small donors nor about small donations. Uh, why is it the case? Uh, in part because of data availability issues, and of course I'm going to spend a lot of time on that, uh, explaining you uh, why the existing literatures until now has uh, mostly focused on large donors and donations or on uh, aggregate campaign donations. So in this paper with uh, Laurent and Garen Vincent, what we try to do, uh, we try to fill this gap uh, by basically uh, answering three questions. The first one is, who are the small donors? The second one is, what factors shape the small donors' behavior? And the third one is, to which extent are small donors uh, different from large donors? And I think this is a key question because, you know, if we were to show that small donors behave exactly the same way uh, than large donors, in this case, uh, we should care much less uh, the, uh, about small donors than uh, what we uh, actually uh, do. Uh, so how is it that we are able to uh, study small donors? To do that, what we did is that we built a novel data set uh, that includes all the contributions reported to the Federal Election Commission in the US uh, between 2005 and uh, 2020. And we are going to link all these individual contributions um, uh, to candidates across races and across years. At the end of the day, our data set includes uh, 340 million contributions and more than three, uh, and more than 30 million unique uh, contributors. Uh, what is key compared to the existing literature is that we are able to observe the vast majority of contributions, including the very small contributions. So basically, for 2020, our contribution level data covered 92% of the total amounts uh, received by uh, candidates. Uh, we have information about donors and we have information about their donations. So about donors, uh, I'm going to show you information about their address, where they live, their occupation, their employer, their gender and their ethnicity. Regarding donations, uh, we have data on the timing of the donation, on the amount of the donation and on the uh, targeted candidate uh, or committee. Uh, to differentiate large and small donors, we pick a definition. So the definitions we decided is that we define as small donors, the donors who do not contribute more than $200 to any committee uh, during the two-year electoral cycle. Uh, overall, we have 42.9 million unique uh, donor cycles, uh, corresponding to 23.2 million small donors. Why is it so that we have information about small contributions? In fact, this is due to the fact that most contributions uh, now flow through conduits, and I'm going to talk a lot about AgBlue 
and win rate. Perhaps you already know about AgBlue. AgBlue is the conduit used by uh, the Democratic Party uh, to raise money. Uh, when you give directly to a candidate or committee, uh, the amount and uh, uh, origin of the donation is only reported uh, when the donation is above $200. Uh, but when the money uh, flows through a conduit, uh, you have all the uh, donations that are reported, including very small donations, like $1, $2, $5, $10 donations are reporting uh, in our data. So just to give you a quick overview of the uh, main results, uh, I'm going to show you a growing uh, evidence, uh, new evidence on the growing importance of small donors. You will see that it matters not only in terms of number of small donors, and obviously I'm going to say like uh, uh, by definition there are like more small donors than large donors, but you will also see that despite the fact that on average you give much less, uh, they represent a growing share of the total amount of uh, contributions. Uh, I'm going to uh, show you descriptive statistics on the characteristics of the small uh, versus the large donors. And in particular, you will see uh, that they differ in terms of gender, in terms of ethnicity. Uh, and third, we will study the behavior of small versus large donors. Uh, in particular, we will see by looking at different factors uh, influencing uh, small and large donations that small donors are more driven by expressive motives than large donors. And at the end of the day, uh, I am going to show you some uh, evidence uh, on the causal impact of political uh, advertising on both small and large donors. So we are going to focus on TV art. We are going to use the exact same empirical framework uh, than the one that were first proposed by uh, Spen Cook and Tony Atty in 2018. And you will see that TV ads affect donations, uh, but that the effect uh, is larger for small than for large donors. We will finish by uh, discussing this uh, finding. So in terms of contribution to the literature, obviously we contribute to the literature on campaign donations. So there are like, there is a very, very large literature. Uh, here I just put a number of names uh, that looked at both the determinants of campaign donations and uh, the consequences of campaign donations. But as I already said, this literature tends to mostly focus on large donations or on large donors. So we are uh, contributing to this literature by studying the determinants of small versus large donors' contributions. Uh, regarding small donors, there is a recent and growing literature. Uh, the recent literature, it mostly uh, relies on uh, survey data, uh, while here we are going to use individual level administrative data, uh, which is good for two reasons. The first one is that we avoid the bias created by self-reported data that are well known. Uh, but the second, uh, key thing that we can do uh, thanks to this individual level administrative data is that we can match uh, the contributor and the candidate characteristics. And you will see uh, that the fact that uh, donors and recipients share uh, similar characteristics act as an important uh, determinant of, uh, of donations. Uh, we are not the first one to uh, use administrative data. In fact, there are like two papers that uh, use administrative data to study uh, small donors. One is by Alvarez and co-authors uh, that focus on Sanders' presidential campaign in 2016. Uh, while here, what we do is that we consider the universe of small donors from 2005 uh, to 2020. And in fact, you will see that for the last electoral cycle, we are not only going to consider uh, democratic donors, but also Republican donors, thanks to uh, the apparition of uh, WinRed. There is also a paper by Albert and Laraja uh, that use survey data and blue data. Uh, what they do is that they uh, focus on the characteristics of the small donors, uh, but they do not link contributors uh, to their uh, recipients, neither do they compare small with large donors. So basically, compared to this existing literature, uh, we uh, provide the first systematic exploration of the characteristics of small donors, and uh, the first study of the determinant of uh, the behavior of small donors uh, compared to the behaviors of uh, large donors. Julia, can I ask? Yeah. You? So, so uh, two hundred dollars is not also a. It's not a coincidental number. It's not just a cutoff of small, large. It's also uh, what's what's the reporting requirements are also at two hundred dollars. So, how to what extent should we think of this as a difference of small versus large versus what's required to be reported versus not? So basically, we, we pick this threshold because this is a threshold that is used uh, for whether or not to report uh, a donation to the FEC. Uh, now, what we do in the, in the paper is that we use the fact that before, basically, uh, only the donations above uh, $200 were reported. What is new with the conduit, and in particular, what, what is new with uh, Axe Blue and with Red, 
that if you look at the law and if you look at the Federal Election Commission regulations, the conduit have to report all the donations, including those uh, that are below uh, $200. So we can study, thanks to this conduit, uh, the small donations and really looked at the, at the small donors. Now there is still a part of the like small donations that are below $200, but given directly to a candidate or committee, not through a conduit that we will not be able to observe. And that we see that because these amounts are reported as aggregated amounts in the data, but we do not have the detail of each donation. The thing is that given that people uh, increasingly use uh, now the conduits, we are able to observe 95% of the donations and the equivalent of 92% of the total amount of the donations. So basically now we're able to cover like nearly like uh, all small donations, thanks to the fact that conduits also have to report uh, the very small uh, uh, donations. Yeah. Okay, so let me turn to, uh, to the data. So our data sets are going to uh, include all the contributions that are made by individual donors uh, and that are reported to the US Federal Election Commission from 2005 to 2020. So at the end of the day, we observe a total of uh, 313 339 uh, million individual contributions. Uh, building this data set, we have to say, is our uh, very first contribution. And we think that this is an important contribution that we do up uh, that this new data uh, will be of use to other researchers interested in studying uh, campaign finance in the, in the, in the US. Uh, here, what you see is that uh, there is a growing number of donations over time and of observed donations over time. Uh, you had like 200 uh, uh 50,000 uh, observation in 2016 you have like 15 million observation uh in 2020 uh you also see an increase uh in the uh, uh maximum amount of uh, the donations that is partly linked to the fact that uh, in 2010 you have citizen united uh so no longer a cap uh, on the amount uh, that is uh that is donated uh regarding the regulatory background so the federal election commission is an independent government agency that is in charge of administering and enforcing uh, the federal campaign finance laws and disclosing funds uh, raised and spent uh, to influence the federal elections. So basically, the, the, the Federal Election Commission regulation, it requires campaign committees to report information on individual contributions uh, that are above $200. So this is a threshold that were uh, used uh, before to distinguish uh, the small uh, from the large contributions. The reported contributions are said to be itemized contributions, and the other contributions are said to be unitemized uh, contributions. So these unitemized contributions are from the contributors that have not, so not yet, because they can like, cross the threshold uh, later on during the electoral cycle, not yet attained uh, the reporting threshold. And we know uh, that this amount exists because they appear as dollar aggregates in the committee's uh, financial summaries. So it's why until now the small donations they were studied uh, from an aggregated point of view. Uh, people knew the total unitemized amount of donations, so the total amount of donations from donors who contributed less uh, than uh, $200. And so this is what you find online uh, if you go on the uh, Federal Election Commission uh, website. Now, the contributions, and this is the second key distinction. So the first key distinction is between itemized and unitemized contributions. The second key distinction in, is between direct contributions and earmarked contributions. So a direct contribution is a contribution from an individual to a recipient committee. An earmarked contribution is a contribution that is collected by an intermediary or conduit with the clear designations from the individual donor of the destination committee. And what is key, and this is really what we use in this paper and that uh, allow us to be like the first uh, to study uh, small donors uh, to uh, such an extent, is the fact that the conduits, as blue to begin with, they need to report all the contributions they collect. Uh, and this is what we are going to exploit uh, to build our new uh, data set. So our main data source is AgBlue. So this online uh, fundraising conduit now dominates uh, democratic fundraising. It was created in 2004 to help democratic cause uh, raises money. And today is used by almost all democratic candidates. So if, if, if you have any questions about Agglu, we can talk uh, more about it if you want. It's a non-profit 
uh, organizations. It was not created by uh, the Democratic uh, Party itself, but it's like uh, of um, uh, I use by Democratic candidates uh, as of today. It was a big success. In particular, you would see that it increased a lot beginning in 2012, 16, 18. Uh, and it was such a success that in 2019, the Republicans decided to create a counterpart to Agblue uh, that was called uh, WinRed. And thanks to that, for 2019-20, uh, we also have data on uh, Republican small uh, donors. Uh, Agblue and WinRed are not the only two conduits. In fact, you have like some other conduits, uh, but they are of uh, very small importance and they receive uh, very little money. Uh, so basically, most contributions in terms of number of contributions in our data set go through conduits. Uh, overall, we have like 339 uh, uh, million individual contributions. Uh, out of which uh, 240 million donations are made through conduit, so they are earmarked. Uh, that, that is the number I, I was telling you uh, before Pinar. For the 2020 cycle, uh, more than 95% of all the observable individual donations uh, made through conduit are uh, included in our, uh, in our, uh, in our data. Uh, here on this plot, you really can see I, the can growing, I ask, uh, yeah. Sorry, yeah, Julia, yeah. can I ask a quick clarifying question? So you, uh, uh, of course, you know, the first part is descriptive, but then you also talk about the role of campaign ads. You mentioned Citizens United. Do you think that from, you know, I don't know, from a technology perspective, they, these conduits are potentially uh, playing a causal role on the increase that you see? Yeah, so, so that, that that's a very good question. Uh, we think that it is the case, in particular, when we uh, study uh, the way Agbu uh, worked and when we read a lot of like... Uh, uh, journalists uh, report about Agblue. In particular, the fact uh, what you see with Agblue is that once you enter your credit card, and then you can give any time. And it's super easy to give. You can give like one box, five dollars, ten dollars. Uh, and it's why you will see that uh, one of the findings we have in terms of like uh, not descriptive but causal results uh, is the fact that uh, political ads on TV are more efficient for small than for large donors. And it can be due also to the fact that you are a small donor, you see a political ad, you are kind of convinced, puff, you take your smartphone, you know, and in two minutes, uh, you can make a donation. Uh, what is hard for us, so one of the things we were thinking about doing was to look at the uh, penetration of Agblue. You, yeah. you know, it was created in Massachusetts uh, to see whether the expansion of Agblue as a technological tool uh, was also a way to convince more small donors. This is something that we, we cannot really do because we do not have it would have been nice, but we, I think we do not have enough in terms of like uh, identification, like and geographical ex expansion of Aglu to identify the effect of the technology. Uh, but obviously, we do think that this is partly driven this increase in small donors uh, by this uh, technological uh, product uh, that made it uh, easier uh, to catch uh, uh, small donations. And then it was used and exploited in a very efficient way uh, by democratic candidates. Now, if you go, for example, I don't know, on the website of uh, Alessandria Ocasio-Cortez, if you want to make a donation to her, it will go through Agblue. So right. this is a mix of you have a new technology, you have more small donors, and also the fact that a uh, growing share of the candidates use this new technology. And given that the, they use these new technologies, the same amount of money than before were flowing directly to candidates so that we could not observe as researcher. Now it's flowing through the conduit. And so as a researcher, we can observe, uh, we can observe the donation. So it's kind of a mix of the, of, of the two. Sounds good, thank you. So here you, you see the, the, the growing importance of the conduits uh, in terms of, uh, of, the number of, uh, of the number of donations. Uh, so you see that uh, in blue, you have the number of Agblue donations. Uh, in green, the non-Agblue, non, non red donations. And in red, uh, the WinRed donations. So this was created in uh, 2019. Uh, you see that at the beginning of the period, 2006, 8, 10, 12, uh, the majority of the donations until 2014, in fact, uh, are still uh, non-Agblue, non red donations. By, by, by the way, it means that small donations are not always associated to the technology because Obama was very good at raising small donations, but it did not use uh, Agblue, uh, neither in um, 2008 uh, nor in 2012. And in fact, the first time uh, the Democrats decided to rely on Agblue is uh, 2016. It does not mean that you do not have uh, small donations here. In fact, you see them. Uh, when you look at the aggregated data with a growing share of unitemized uh, uh, 
uh, donations. It's just that we do not uh, observe the, the, the individual donations in the, in the data. In 2016, it, it, it took a, a growing importance, you know, like more than 20 million donations uh, through Aglu, uh, nearly doubled in 2018. And then you see 2020, it reached like uh, 120 million donations, uh, which is uh, basically five to six times uh, what you have uh, compared to donations not through conduit. Uh, and you also see this growing share of, uh, of WinRed. Uh, obviously, this is a little bit more striking uh, if you look at the number of donations uh, than if you look at the amount of donations, uh, because small donations uh, are small <laughs> by definition, they are below 200. A lot of them, I'm going to show you the, the, the distribution, they're just like five, ten dollars donations. So in terms of like total amount, uh, the large donations are still larger than uh, the total amount received by uh, small donors, but it's like slowly changing uh, over time. Uh, as of today, uh, small donations, like blue and win red donations for 2020, they represented 40% of the total amount contributed. So which is kind of a, a fair share. Uh, the candidates uh, also increasingly rely uh, on, uh, on the use of conduit. So this is a uh, you see here the share of the candidates, uh, democratic candidates uh, using uh, AgBlue. Uh, basically, this share is uh, above uh, 90% uh, as of today. For the democratic candidate, basically, there is no cost to use AgBlue. So rather than setting up your own way to collect money, you have this app that is uh, very well uh, now uh, available uh, on the number of like uh, donors. Uh, so this is a lower cost, it's super efficient. So basically, like they prefer to use these conduits uh, than to uh, raise uh, their money, uh, their money themselves. Okay. Uh, so just to give you a sense of uh, the share of contributions for which uh, we have uh, information, it increased over time, and in particular, it increased with the fact that a growing share of small donations are uh, made through blue beginning in 2002, uh, 14. Uh, 16, 2020. Uh, as of today, you know, uh, we have like uh, around 95% uh, uh, of uh, the total number of contributions, 92% of uh, the observed contributions. Uh, this is higher if we have like all democratic congressional candidates uh, than if we look here at all candidates. But you know, now, given that you also have win red, so that we also have like small donors from the Republican Party, uh, this share is going to be uh, very high, uh, both for uh, Democratic and uh, for uh, Republican uh, candidates. Okay. Sorry, Julian, can I can I quickly clarify yeah. to make sure I understand? And this is also related. There is a question you gave me on Q and A, and then it's really into you know, this question. So the initial like growth in the table across years of this volume of small donations you've shown is due to two things. One is just there is more people donating, and second, we observe more of the donations. And so in particular for Republicans, uh, we only observe this in 2020. So this like observations is largely driven by like, there is a new data we observe on this, on these people, right? That's true. Uh, so you have a mix of the two. Uh, part of the increase uh, in the number of donations, if we come back to this table, uh, in particular, if you look at 2018, and if you look at 2020, Basically, you know, this is, I'm not going to say this is absent at blue, uh, but this is mostly driven by Obama raising like small donations and Obama was not relying at all uh, on Agblue. So part of it is really like the entry of new like small donors. Uh, now, part of the increase we see here and we see here and we see here is linked to two things. One of the things that before we just had like a uh, total unitemized amount received by candidates. Now we have like the, the number of small donors. So this is not that there is more small money, but you have like more observations uh, because we observe the donations flowing through conduits, which is also the case for the Republican candidates uh, only in 2018, 2020. So basically you are right. Uh, this rise is a mix of two things. Uh, the fact that de facto uh, you have more small donors and the fact that we also observe more donations because the growing share of the donations uh, are flowing uh, through conduit, so are now uh, uh, observable for uh, researchers. One of the things we, we have not done, but this would be an easy exercise to do, easy, but now we have all the data that will allow us to do that, 
uh, would be just to see uh, what we would have observed uh, if the same donations uh, would have uh, flowed directly to the candidates, not through the conduits. Uh, and obviously, you will have like a smaller number of, uh, of, of, of observations here. Okay. okay. Uh, and so this is just the, the distribution of the uh, of the amount of the contribution. The, the only thing here I, I wanted to uh, alight uh, was the importance of you know the very small contributions like uh, below 200. Uh, like uh, below, these are beans of size uh, 10. Uh, below zero at ten dollars, you have nearly like more than uh, one fourth uh, of the of the donations. So in fact, a lot of donations are here. They represent an increasing share of money, and so what you want to do is to understand the behavior of these guys uh, rather than just like focusing on uh, why the Koch brothers uh, decide to contribute some money uh, to the Republican uh, campaign. The other thing that is key in the way we build our data set is the fact that we can link uh, the donations to specific uh, donors. Uh, this was not uh, easy, uh, to be totally uh, honest. I'm going to go uh, quickly through that. Uh, but basically, you know, the information uh, on contributors is uh, collected in a number of different ways. And what we wanted to do uh, was to build contributor fixed effect in particular, because, you know, our definition uh, on, of uh, small donors is made at the uh, contrib contributor level. So basically, uh, to uh, summarize uh, what took us uh, four months in uh, four seconds, uh, we have four variables, first name, last name, street, and zip code. And we define the number of rules, uh, but basically two persons are considered the same if they match exactly on three characteristics, for example, first name, street, zip code, and they are going to fuzzy match uh, on the fourth. At the end of the day, we identify uh, uh, 30 million uh, unique donors. This is key because, again, when we turn to the regression analysis, we control uh, for the North fixed effect. Uh, so we really wanted to uh, properly define uh, these uh, small donors to begin with. So the small donors, we define them as the donors who do not contribute more than $200 during a two-year electoral cycle to any committee. And the large donors uh, are going to be all other donors. Uh, obviously, this uh, distinction is uh, cycle specific. So we could have like a donor that is small in a cycle and large uh, in another cycle. Okay. Let me jump on that, uh, that I already explained. So let me turn to the first set of uh, results uh, that we have. Uh, in particular, the differences in the characteristics and contribution patterns of uh, small and large donors. Uh, so we have these 30 million unique donors uh, for which we have data on name, address, occupation, and employers. Uh, we are going to geolocalize the donors based on the address. We are going to find the gender et ethnicity based on both names and uh, addresses. Okay. The first thing that you see, if you have this basic table, so what we do in this kind of table, so this is just like descriptive statistics, uh, but in fact, we uh, gather a number of things from this. Uh, in the first column, you have the characteristics of the candidates. In the second one, the characteristics of the large donors. The third one, the characteristics of the small donors. And the fourth one, the characteristics of the voting age uh, population. So the first thing that you see here is that you have more women and you have a uh, uh, higher share of minorities uh, among small donors, both compared uh, to the overall population compared uh, to large donors and compared uh, to, the, to the candidates, okay? So this, year, this is an average uh, over the entire period. And you see uh, that it is even more the case uh, if we focused uh, on, uh, on recent elections. Now, if we look at the geography of the, of the small donors, uh, here we just plot uh, the small uh, versus the large uh, contributions uh, over space. In this case, we find uh, little differences uh, between the small uh, and the large donors. What you will see that is of interest with uh, respect to geography is not so much that uh, small and large donors are located in different space, in fact, they are not, uh, but the fact uh, that uh, large donors tends to give much less uh, to out-of-district races uh, than small donors. So in a sense, geography plays uh, less of a role uh, for uh, small donors than for uh, large donors. What is also of interest, so unfortunately, we just have the, the data until the end of uh, December 2020. It would have been of interest to see what happened this year. 
uh, at the uh, uh, in March. Uh, but what is of uh, interesting here is that you see that the, 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 there is a lot of uh, cyclicality, both for large and for small uh, donations, uh, but that the, the size of cyclicality is much uh, stronger uh, for small uh, for small donors. So this is particularly uh, striking here. Uh, if we look at the at the uh, end of uh, 2020, uh, at the death of Supreme Court uh, Justice uh, Ruth uh, Bader Ginsburg, well, you see this huge increase uh, in the in the size of small donations. You also have an increase uh, for large donations, uh, but whose uh, extent uh, is uh, is much lower. Uh, the third thing that we, we looked, we wanted to see uh, whether small and large donors were similar or different uh, if we were to consider the races uh, they give to. Uh, so to see that, uh, what we did is that we computed uh, the share of all the small and large donors uh, in each race. Uh, obviously, they were uh, giving exactly uh, to the same race uh, what we should have expected uh, was simply like this uh, 45 degree line. Uh, de facto, you see a strong correlation, uh, but we also see like a lot of dispersions. So some races with a very large share of uh, small donors and some races uh, with a very large uh, share of, uh, of large donors. Okay. So Julia, quickly to clarify yeah. on the previous picture about the uh, timing uh, and cyclicality, one slide below. This is only yeah. for Democrats, so it's also including Republicans. Uh, so this is a very good question, and given that this is for uh, the 2019-2020 uh, electoral cycle, this is for all donations, uh, both Republican uh, and Democrats, actually. So here, in fact, I, I didn't tell you, I should have like spent a little bit more time. So this is not the total amount contributed that you have. Uh, if you look at the, uh, if you look at the uh, y-axis, what we do have here uh, is a share of uh, small donors contributions. So basically over the cycle, uh, we look at, uh, we for each day, we compute the share of uh, the total donation that happened on this given day. And what you see that for like small donors, you have like rise on like uh, some days, uh, while uh, for uh, large donors, you have that but to a much uh, lower extent. Got it. Yeah, that uh, would be, yeah. you, you, you can split it by both, but because like conventions have different days, there is some changes in choice architecture of different packs which no, happen true. on different days would be, would be interesting just to see how, like, what are the predictions for Republicans and Democrats? Yeah, it would make a lot of sense. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, we will do that. Okay. Let me, okay, I have 10 minutes. Uh, let me like jump quickly on the conceptual uh, framework. So basically, if you look at the literature to understand uh, why do people uh, give uh, to campaigns, uh, you have like two main uh, set of motives. Uh, first set of motives are the strategic motives. Uh, so the fact that you see contributions as uh, political uh, investment, uh, either they're completely elector electorally motivated or they are favor motivated. And then you have all the non-strategic motives. Uh, so contributions are uh, just seen as a consumption goods, okay? Uh, I'm not going to enter into all the details, uh, but basically, we have like this very simple uh, framework uh, that allow us to uh, 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 define the set of uh, variables uh, we want to test uh, to understand uh, whether or not uh, small and large donations are driven by uh, the same motives. Uh, we are going to look at three uh, broad categories of determinants. The first one are the matching factors. So to see whether or not you give more to candidates uh, that are like you, I'm a woman, do I give more to female candidates? Uh, I am like Spanish, do I give more to like Hispanic candidates? The second set of factors are the political factors, and in particular, the characteristics of the candidates. Do I give more or, or less to incumbent or like to party leaders? Uh, and the third set are, are the electoral factors. Uh, and in particular, the competitiveness of the race and the fact that uh, the candidates are among the two top uh, vote getters. Uh, that is, that are important factors uh, because basically, if you find like no effect of closeness, or if you find the fact that uh, you do not give to the uh, top two, uh, it might mean that uh, you are more driven by some expressive motive than by some electoral motives, okay? So let me just show you the, 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 the model we have. 
So just to be completely clear of, on, on, on what we are doing here. Until now, I was using or like 400 million donations to give you like descriptive statistics. Now there is something very specific that we want to do is to test this matching political electoral factors. Uh, given that uh, we want uh, to look at uh, the match between candidates and donors, we are going to focus our uh, analysis on contributions to congressional candidates. So not donations to PAC or donations to parties. We are going to look at either general elections and primary elections. We are going first to focus on election cycles from 2012 to 2020. Just because, as I show you in the descriptive statistics, uh, small donations from 2004 to 2012 were like, uh, but there were very few of them. And we're going to focus on democratic candidates, uh, in a sense, like also to answer your, your question, Andre, to have something that is consistent over time. And then uh, I'm going to show you some robustness uh, with uh, win red and Republican uh, donations for 2019, 2020. Okay? So considering donations to candidates, for both general and primary elections, focusing on 2012 to 2020 and democratic candidates, we have 67 million contributions uh, from 8.5 million unique donors that can be either large or small. Now, regression analysis, we're going to do the following. We're going to look on the left-hand side at uh, the amount or probability uh, to contribute. And on the right-hand side, we are going to uh, control uh, for uh, both seats and candidate characteristics, okay? We are going to look at uh, indicator variables indicating whether characteristics of contributors match those of candidates. And we are going to control for year fixed effect, state fixed effect, house senate fixed effect, and contributor fixed effect. So basically, for you to get a sense of what we are doing here, it's like descriptive analysis, but knowing that we exploit the variations within the same contribution, across races and across time, okay? And we cluster our standard errors both at the candidate and the contributor level. One more uh, word uh, about the uh, left-hand side. Uh, either we consider the extensive margin, so whether or not you contribute to a race. So to do that, uh, we built the universe of contributor-candidate pairs, okay? And if there is no donation, the value uh, of Y is going to be equal to zero. For the ease of interpretation, if there is one, we are going to put 100. And when we look at the intensive margins, we only focus on the contributor candidate pair for which uh, donation is uh, above zero. Uh, and we're going to take the uh, hyperbol hyperbol hyperbolic sign transformation of the, of the variable. Okay. So uh, let me jump on the descriptive statistics directly to the regression table. So what you have here okay. is the following. Yeah. Yeah. You have, to, you have 45 minutes, but then 15 minutes of questions. So if you want to take a bit of time from that, you should feel free if you want to spend extra several minutes on the result. Just wanted to to mention okay. this. Okay. So, okay, nice. Thanks. So what we have in all the table is that in the first three column, uh, you have the results for the large donors. In the column four to six, you have results uh, for small donors. Okay. Uh, in colon one, colon four, we control for election fixed effect, state fixed effect, house senate fixed effect. In color, in colon two, we introduce the contributor fixed effect. And in colon three, we also introduce the state year uh, fixed effect. Uh, our uh, preferred specification is, is the one of like colon two and the one of uh, colon five, okay, with all the set of uh, fixed effects. What do we find here? So for this first table, we look at the extensive margin, okay? So whether or not you decide to contribute to a candidate. We find that uh, there is more donations uh, where the race is close, okay? So basically a close race increases the probability of giving by around 60% for large donors, 25% for small donors, okay? We do not find a uh, positive effect of incumbency, if anything, the, the effect of incumbency that we measure is negative. We find a large effect, and that I'm going to spend a lot of time on, on it. We, we find a large effect of uh, in-state and in-district uh, donations. And we find uh, for large donors some ethnic and gender uh, activities. So the fact that you give more uh, to the candidates uh, who are of the same gender or who are of the same uh, ethnicity. 
So this is for the extensive margin. Now, if we look at the intensive margin, so conditional on donating, how much do you contribute to a race? Okay. In terms of closeness, now we find like no effect or if anything, a negative effect. Okay. And we still find a uh, positive impact uh, of uh, in same state, in same district. So the fact that you give more to races uh, that are happening uh, in your uh, in your district. Okay. The overall effect. So if you look both at the extensive and at the intensive margins, are really in line uh, with the extensive margin results. So with a positive impact of closeness, a negative impact of incumbency. Uh, somehow positive, but not very strong effect of uh, uh, affinity, so same gender, uh, same ethnicity. And the stronger uh, driver of donations is the fact that uh, this is in the same uh, district or state uh, where, you are, uh, where you are living. In terms of the, the role of closeness, for example, and we, we, we did that uh, not, not only for closeness, but for all the variables of interest, uh, and in fact, going back to uh, uh, the early question by uh, Pinar, it, our results are not given by the fact that we pick like 200 uh, as a threshold, okay, uh, for like small versus large donations. In these uh, figures and in many figures uh, in the paper, what we did is that we just uh, run the donor, the donor uh, according to their donor percentile, okay? You have that on the on the on the fourth fourth figure. And you see that you really see this uh, growing impact of closeness, uh, the larger the donor, okay? And that you see that also here, that the impact of uh, closeness on the intensive margin uh, is larger, uh, the larger the, uh, the, larger the, 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 the donor, okay? This is even more, and I think this is what we have uh, as one of the most uh, striking results in terms of like descriptive uh, results is the fact that the smaller the donors, the more out of district donations. And here you see this is completely striking. Uh, basically, uh, you give uh, much less uh, to donors, uh, to candidates that are in your district if you are a small donor, and much more if you are a large donor. And this is something like we find whether you look at district, whether you look at state, uh, the fact that uh, geography, in a sense, uh, play a, a much more important role uh, for small donors than for large donors. And this is why uh, we are going to turn in the, in the last part of the paper to the push factors, uh, whether this is due to the fact that uh, as like a small donors are going to receive message asking you for a race, and even if the race is taking place at the other side of the of the US, given this is so simple for you now on your smartphone, you know, try to make a click and to give some money, uh, you are going to contribute to this uh, to this race. Uh, okay. using, okay. To clarify, this this out of state includes national national elections as well, or is it all other local elections? No, no, including at uh, national elections. Uh, so, the only one that we do not consider here is the presidential elections. So we are all the House and Senate elections here. I think. So basically, yeah. So basically, you are going to contribute to some like uh, close race uh, for House or, or Senate uh, at the other side of the US uh, if you are a small donor, while large donors are not going to do uh, are not going to do that. Okay. So we, we should think about outside, outside this kind of outside option. The other alternative is similar level election, but in a different state, in a different market, or is it different? I mean, I guess, I guess I'm saying it. it no, no, but we uh, just to be to be totally uh, exact. Here we we control for house and senate effect. So this is within a contributor controlling for a given race. You are going to give uh, more as a small donors uh, to races that do not take place in your district or that do not take place in your state. While as a large donors, you are going to focus the majority of the donations of uh, to races that take place in your district or state. But there can be election on different levels. It doesn't need to be only house elections on a Senate election. It can be it's just any elections in a different state, right? But here, what we do in this uh, sample for this uh, part of the analysis is that we are focusing on like general elections, primary elections uh, for Congress. So uh, uh, okay. either Got for uh, House or other for Senate. So we are not going, we are not looking in fact at uh, other types of, uh, of elections. Okay. So Got by it. construction, it has to be like uh, similar elections. Yeah. 
Okay. Sorry. So let me, okay. Let me just uh, show you the last set of results that we have uh, because, yeah, so that we have a discussion. Then we, we look at like uh, primary versus general elections. Uh, we look at uh, Republican uh, versus, uh, uh, versus Democratic uh, candidates, okay? Uh, if I do a wrap up of what we have, uh, basically here is what we find. Uh, first of all, uh, we find that a uh, number of different factors affect the behavior of donors. So closeness play a role, positive one. Incumency play a role. Ethnic af affinity plays a role. Uh, the fact of giving uh, to top two uh, candidates also, we find this role played by geography that is like stronger for uh, large than for small donors and also to some extent a role played by ideology. Uh, all these factors they have a larger impact on large donors than on small donors. And the main difference between large and small donors are with respect to geography and to closeness. Small donors, they give much more to out of district or state race and less to close race than large donors. And they seem to focus on prominent races and candidates. And that we, 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 we showed, uh, uh, we have this uh, Erfindal index of uh, donation concentrations. And we see that uh, donations are much more concentrated for small and than for large donors. And you can look at the number of cases. But basically, this would be like all the candidates of the US that you know well because the media are covering them. Uh, this might be driven by uh, fundraising and by the behavior of uh, campaign. And so this is one why in the in the in the last last part of the of the paper we we look at the effect of uh, pull factors and in particular uh, political advertising. Okay. I'm going to show you these results uh, and then uh, conclude. Uh, so basically, we wanted to see the impact of campaign TV ads. Uh, not only we wanted to see whether campaign advertising drive political contributions, uh, there is already a literature on that, uh, but we wanted to see whether the effect vary depending on small and on large donors. So what we decided to do is to focus on uh, TV advertising. Uh, this is still uh, a very large uh, share of uh, the candidates' uh, total expenses, 55% in 2020. Uh, and uh, in 2022, 74% uh, of presidential ad uh, spending went to uh, TV ads, okay? For identification here, we just decided to uh, use uh, Spain Cook and uh, Tony Atti strategy. Uh, which compare pairs of counties that lie in different DMAs, okay? So the, the idea of the identification is that uh, these counties they represent on average 3 to 5% of the DMAs population. So they likely do not impact uh, campaign advertising decisions. And so we can uh, consider that the exposition uh, to border counties uh, to advertising is as good as uh, random. Uh, we replicate huh, the, the result in uh, Spain Cook uh, Tonieri. Uh, we also replicate the, 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 the recent result in sites and others that use the same strategy as Spain Cook Tonieri, uh, but for other race. They look at Senate House uh, Governor uh, from 2000 to 2018. Okay. Now, what is our empirical strategy? So that it's really the one of uh, Spain Cook Tonieri. So on the left hand side, uh, we look at the number of contributors or the total amount of uh, contributions. Uh, and on the right hand side, uh, we look at the number of ads that are aired in County C during ele general election T uh, compared to the number of ads uh, uh, controlling, sorry, for the number of ads aired in the same media market for all other races. Uh, we control for county pair uh, by year fixed effect. Okay. Uh, so the idea is really to compare the deviations from the mean in one county to the deviations from the mean in the neighboring uh, counties. We control, obviously, for demographic controls, for county fixed effect, and we cluster our standard errors at the state and county per levels. What do we find? We do find that democratic advertising have a positive effect on democratic uh, donations. This is what you see here in uh, column uh, uh, three. Uh, we find that Republican ads has a negative effect on democratic donations. Uh, and we find that this effect is uh, driven by uh, small, do small donors. So small donors seem to be much more responsive uh, to political advertising than the, the large one. In terms of magnitude of the effect, uh, we show that doubling uh, the number of ads increases the number of contributions by about 8% uh, 
uh, of the means, okay? So why is that the case? It might be driven by the fact that small donors are less informed. So when you expose them uh, to some ad, uh, they respond more uh, to this ad. It can also be the fact that for the same degree of information, uh, large donors, they receive more personalized requests to contribute. So given that they already receive a number of requests to contribute, at the end of the day, they are not going to react uh, to uh, TV uh, advertising uh, regarding their, uh, their contribution. Okay. So yes, basically that's all. So we study the characteristics and behavior of small donors uh, in the US uh, since 2004. Uh, we use the fact that thanks to the conduits and act blue and with red in particular, and the fact that they have to report all contributions, uh, now we can uh, observe nearly the universe uh, of donations uh, in the in the US. We have data on the characteristics of small versus large donors. We see that uh, they differ in terms of de descriptive characteristics. Uh, we see that they also differ in terms of uh, behavior, and in particular, the fact that small donors give more to out-of-district races and less to close race than large donors. So as if they uh, were acting a little bit more expressively and driven less uh, by uh, electoral uh, motives. And we do document uh, this causal impact of political advertising on donors that is in line with previous results in the literature, but showing that uh, TV ads uh, have a larger effect for small than for large donors. So thanks. Perfect. Uh, thank you, Julia. Um... Thank you, everyone, for also for quite. We can, I think, open the floor for a discussion. If people in the audience also want to jump in, just raise your hand, and we'll just promote you. Yeah, with that, uh, let's open discussion for a uh, floor for discussion. Julia, I guess this is first of all a very, very nice paper. I really like the paper. I think it's very informative. At the same time, I think you're touching a number of different issues, and I think with advertising, you're trying to understand potentially the effects or how do we persuade small donors and large donors in different ways. But do you have any other ideas? I mean, presumably the media consume, the persuasive efforts, all the, the potential types of communication, the, for instance, uh, the you know, off-field communication, private events and so on, will differ for small, large donors. And to what extent is it just that they have different motivations versus it's the, the external environment or communication with these people driving these differences? What's your <laughs> opinion on that? No, no, that, that's, a, that's a very good question. Uh, and to be totally honest, we decided to first test uh, political advertising on TV because we had this uh, very nice uh, empirical strategy and, uh, and data. Uh, what else uh, could we uh, consider? The, the first thing that we wanted to look at and that we're going to do it in the uh, near future is to look at rallies. Uh, and whether they do affect uh, small, more small than large donors, which is something that I really would like to see the results uh, because uh, we know that rallies are not so much a way to convince people to come and give, but much a way to convince other people <laughs> that see uh, the success of the rally and that uh, help you like building, you know, your uh, your communication as a as a candidate. So this is the second thing we, we would like to look at. Uh, and the third thing that for now you see, I I, I went uh, I did not show you the results we have on ideology. We have some results on ideology that is uh, not finished yet, in particular because we relied on uh, Adam Bonica measures of candidate ideology, and uh, and he did not build this measure yet for uh, the 2020 electoral uh, cycle. Uh, but you know, if you look at the in particular, the, the, the coverage of this increase in small donations, a uh, growing number of people are linking that uh, to the uh, uh, polarization of US politics. Uh, and you know the fact also that we, we find this concentration of small donations on like a, a number of candidates. Like some people think that uh, this might, in fact, uh, increasing re reliance on uh, small donations might lead uh, to a growing candidate polarizations. To be totally honest, I don't know, but I would like to be able to test it. Uh, because if it were to be the case, uh, if candidates to attract more small donations, it tends to polarize more their discourse. Uh, this would be kind of a, an, an intended uh, negative effect, uh, if I may uh, formulate it this way, of, uh, of small donations. So this is like the, the I think that really focusing on ideology is the second thing that uh, we want to, uh, we would like to uh, to push more. And this, you would think that those uh, dynamics, for instance, race tightness, the incumbent, whether there's an incumbent running or no or not, would drive different type of 
persuasive tactics and advertising and communication, all the all the field efforts. But just as a side note, in uh, for instance, the the one paper uh, with Garcia Jimeno, we have looked into Senate races and the the communication between candidates, and we do find when the the race is becoming tighter, communication is more differentiated. So that there's at least from the the language of the politicians, there is more polarization to the extent that that's also perceived by the the watchers and that should be the goal it, it actually relates yeah. to to what you, you had as an idea so okay. so quite thanks uh julia great great stuff uh you know great data and you know which is sort of uh, characteristic of your other papers as well one one thought that i uh, or one clarifying question i had is that is it the decision of like individual candidates to link uh link to act blue or not yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's really the decision of uh, of candidates uh that's something that is uh impressive in fact and, and this is well you act blue was not some, something that was uh, set up by uh, the democratic party act blue was really like this non-profit uh, organization uh, set up by people in uh, massachusetts that they okay we will have the, this app to make donations more efficient and you see it was created in 2004 and for example obama both in 2008, 2012, he decided to run without Agblue, while right? focusing a, a lot on like uh, small donations. And so it was not pushed so much uh, by uh, the Democratic parties. Uh, I think uh, candidates uh, began to use it because it, it saved a lot of cost. Like basically, I would like to, to talk more to candidates about that, but before that, you went to their website and they needed to have their like this payment system included and everything. Now they just send like everybody like through Agblue, so they save cost, this is more efficient. And they can also like uh, receive like uh, more money from like uh, donors that are not going to target directly. So I think like this was then adopted by democratic candidates just because they realized that it worked. Uh, it worked pretty well. Uh, I'm not saying that at the end uh, in 2018, 20, the Democratic Party was not pushing that a little bit, but there were no obligations. For WinRed, it's something completely different. Uh, WinRed was really like the Republican Party that realized that we need to have something equivalent to Act Blue. So WinRed was not set up by the Republican Party, but basically it was set up because the Republican Party wanted WinRed to be created. That what is funny between quote is that WinRed was not created as a non-profit organization. It's a for-profit uh, uh, business, uh, but that was efficient at the, at the beginning at attracting money. But this was much more a policy uh, that was uh, implemented uh, with the willingness uh, to catch more small donors by the Republican Party. While on the Democratic side, at the beginning, it was something that some candidates decided to adopt, and then it was a success. So others uh, also follow up. Right, because I think I think one maybe if I remember the statistic, it was like in 2016, about 60 percent of Democratic candidates were using Act Blue, and then that almost went up to 100 percent. Um, yeah, yeah. Right. Oh. Now that's true. So this is perhaps something, yeah. No, but we, uh, I'm telling you my understanding of what happened. So this is also perhaps so, something that at some point we we need to to go and talk more to uh, to the party. But that's true that we see at some point like all the candidates. Uh, this is this one yeah. uh, that, that decided to uh, to adopt it, like from like 60, 62 uh, to turn to to nearly like uh, 100. But you know, like basically. Okay, in the talk, I mostly focused on general elections, uh, but Agbu is also used uh, a lot uh, for primary elections. So this is also a way, you know, like if all your competitors, they use Agbu, you should also use the same technology. So at the end of the day, right, it makes it not compulsory, but yeah. Uh, Julia, a couple of things. Uh, very, very, a lot of stuff, like very interesting, a lot, a lot of the scripture, a lot of cool stuff. Couple of like, one thing I was thinking would be helpful is just to maybe like report the variance explained by individual fixed effects, campaign fixed effects. There's like, there's different, there's different, there's, even before, like, I think kind of the unique feature here, we see these people who are, are repeatedly, like, even like knowing how many of individual contributions in year 2016 are repeated from 2012. Is it new people? Just like this is scriptures, I think like would be super valuable. And ideally, yeah. we'd see the same on the Republican side, but obviously, we have only one year. I, I like, I guess maybe like repeating it now with midterm elections will be very cool because I assume there is like a second next cycle of the data coming in now. Um, 
that's one thing. And the second thing I thought like was uh, just this kind of on, again on the when people donate not to their race but another race, describing more who are the candidates who have the most like concentration. Like, is it all the Democrats who live in different states? They donate to AOC or like to other like really superstar candidates. Is it like more like what? Uh, yeah, how kind of just describing which which candidates has the highest fixed effect, and especially for people who donate outside of their market. Um, yeah, that's these are very good points. Uh, these are very good points. Uh, on the on the first one, you're right. We should have done it, and we will uh, definitely uh, do it. Uh, and not only report the variance, but report uh, whether or not the variance for the different fixed effects uh, changed over time. So that's uh, that's a great point. Uh, for the second one, uh, we, 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 we put some like uh, descriptive statistics so I can like give you names for each race and it would be like AOC, but not only, uh, but de facto like to do it in a more, uh, in a, in a, in a more systematic way would be good in particular because then in the, in the, in the, when describing ideology, we could like, uh, properly uh, look at the re relationship between uh, the size of the uh, variance explained by uh, a given candidate fixed effect and the ideology of the candidate compared uh, to the ideology of the rest of uh, his or her party. So these are, yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then for the TV ads result, you mentioned this is only for 2020 or this is across across the years? For the no, this is across years. Across so years. Uh, let me move back to uh, what we have for the TV fixed effect. Uh, so we don't have all years uh, back in 2012. So this is why I'm just double checking for the first year, not to say anything wrong. Uh, we have, uh, yes, we have data uh, back in 2012. Uh, mm -hmm. 2012 to 2016. And what we are missing for now is uh, TV ads for 2020. I see. Because I, I, the reason yeah. I'm asking is like, oh, if you get data for 2020, uh, obviously Republicans also had pretty uh, controversial ads and there was a lot of like different type of messaging going on. So just repeating this uh, re for Democrats and for Republicans separately would be cool. But I can see how there might be not enough data and uh, this data might yeah. be out yet. Okay. We'll look for that. Julia, one more quick note. I don't know if this was already in the paper, but... Um... The fact that the larger donations, they seem to have more local, uh, they seem to focus more locally as opposed to small donors. I, could that speak to the instrumental motivations? Because to the extent that I want to influence my local politician, I probably yes. care more about those. That's, is that, do you think that's yeah, yeah. the difference so, in so, motivations is explaining this local versus, yeah, this yeah. result? I think there are two things. This is that, that explain why you have this in-district focus uh, for la large donors. And we think that uh, for small donors, uh, this is also due to the fact that they respond more to pull factors. So the fact they see like an ad on TV for a campaign in, in another district and they're going to respond to that and to send money uh, in an uh, out of district race. So this is a little bit of the of the two, uh, in my view, uh, that play a game. Like like uh, large donors, you know, they receive like specific message uh, for people they, they might influence and benefit from. Uh, if they are elected, uh, while small donors, they do not receive this specific uh, message uh, that can bring them some like political favors, basically. Uh, and they receive and uh, react a lot to the pull factors uh, they see, for example, on TV, or like we measure TV, yeah, but uh, we could look at social media, for example. Because targeting, you might think that targeting might influence also the small donor. I mean, if this is just, okay, I, I need you to donate to your local politician. And if they are... Yeah, but I see what is... If that. You, mm -hmm. That's true. No, but it's, 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 I guess it's not they are less responsive to that because they also give more to in district rates, but I think they're more responsive to uh, you should give to the Democratic Party or you should give to this candidate and they, they just react to, yeah. The, the big thing, you know, at the, at the time of the, of the, uh, of the death of like uh, uh, the, the, the Supreme Court justice is, is really the fact that, you know, this has this like negative event. Uh, and people who are Democrats, uh, they say, wow, this is very, very bad for the Democratic Party. So they just decide to tell their, to take their sample and make donations. In fact, you know, they, they, it has, they act, they, yes, they act uh, more expressively. They react more in a sense to the political environment and to, to, to what they see on the, on, on the news. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one more, one more thought, and this is 
kind of, uh, I think in the news, we saw it much for, for Republicans. So we just like, uh, I just put out a paper a couple of weeks, like a couple of weeks ago with two of my behavioral colleagues in Columbia, Columbia about this same effect on the Republican side. But I wonder in Democrats, you see the data historically. So a lot of this facts, I think in 2020, what happened, a lot of this facts added a pre-check box, make it a weekly donation to their campaigns. And so what, what basically what we did in the paper is we went and found the moment when they added the checkbox and tried to estimate the effect of this adding default on uh, <laughs> weekly donations by small donors. We find very large effects of this. So the, the paper is out. I can follow up later. We can talk offline more about this. But the thing mm -hmm. we cannot do, we don't see what these people were doing before and after again before the win red is only for this for one year. But I wonder if there was similar behavior by Democrats historically when they use some kind of choice architecture on their websites of how donations happen. Uh, ideally, what we were trying to see and we couldn't find good data is what is the effect downstream? Do people get upset that this money were like, they were tricked into donating this money? Did they didn't show up for next elections? Did they didn't donate in the future? So I just don't know how much Democrats use it historically, but that's kind of the unique aspect of this data you see is people like repeating over time. And if they're upset later on, you okay. can try to speak to like, why are they upset? Okay. That's a yes. very good point. Uh, if you can send me the paper, yeah. Yeah, well, basically, I, I, I mean, just, just the effect side is where like, where so like we basically see that out of like 450 million Republicans got around 10% were due to this weekly defaults. Uh -huh. Around 5 okay. million of this were extra refunded because we also see refunds. But just, uh, I was surprised by the magazine. I wonder if we can see his, in the historical snapshots of this donation pages, how they were structured. Maybe there is a, another, another lever that guys can use to increase donations, especially from small okay. donors. Yeah, I'll send, I'll follow up, I'll send the people. Yeah, thanks. All right, so it's, Looks like we like all the questions. Julia uh, and uh, Pinar uh, Ananya, thanks a lot for joining for the uh, talk. For the so much. Really interesting stuff, great discussion, and uh, I'll see you guys later. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye.